Black holes exist. Let me tell you how we know. Black holes were originally theorized in the geometric language of Einstein's general relativity by Schwarzschild in 1915. In the following decades, the properties of this strange prediction of Einstein's equations were examined in more detail by Johannes Trosta, Arthur Eddington, George Lemaitre, and more. Plenty more theoretical work was done on these hypothetical objects all the way through the end of the 20th century, including by people like Roy Kerr, Roger Penrose, and Stephen Hawking. However, it wasn't until 1972 that the first candidate for a black hole was discovered, Cygnus X1. This potential black hole was found as one part of a binary system that was emitting X-rays. Now, mind you, normal black holes don't emit strongly in that part of the spectrum, so seeing X-rays come from a binary system meant that something weird was happening. By examining the motion of the companion star, it was possible to determine the mass of the unknown object, and it was found to be too heavy to be a neutron star. The only alternative consistent with our best theory of gravity was a black hole. Since this first discovery, we've confirmed this hypothesis with more precise and corroborating data. But that's not enough, right? Starting in the 90s, astronomers have been tracking the motion of stars in the galactic core. By plotting this data, one can obviously tell that these stars are orbiting something. But whatever that something is, it's invisible, it's heavy, and it's small. It has more than 4 million times the mass of our sun, and it's only about 4 times the size of Pluto's orbit. It's far too small and too massive to hold up to any known force of nature, leading us to the only logical conclusion, that it has collapsed to form a black hole. But of course, that's still not enough, right? Well, in 2015, physicists at the LIGO Gravitational Wave Observatory detected, for the first time in history, what was affectionately called the CHIRP. By very sensitively measuring the distance that two perpendicular laser beams travel, they were able to determine that space-time was oscillating ever so slightly for about half a second. Using general relativity, we can then model what we would expect to see if two black holes collided, and lo and behold, they match exceedingly well. Surely that's enough, right? If not, in 2019, an international team for the first time ever produced an image of a black hole, or at least the gases around it. In this famous picture of M87 star, you're seeing superheated gases swirl around something. Something that doesn't emit light and is around 38 billion kilometers across. From earlier observations of nearby stars, it was determined that this dark object, whatever it is, has a mass of more than 6.5 billion times that of the sun. Now, according to general relativity, the size of the event horizon, which is the point of no return, for a black hole of that much mass is, you guessed it, right around 38 billion kilometers. And that's why there's a shadow there of that size in this image. Any light emitted from closer to the center couldn't possibly escape. So yeah, black holes are real.